Number one. I was having a drunken heart to heart with my dad the other night, and we were sharing some stories from the past. He told me an experience he had back in the late 1980s, which he described as the luckiest escape of his life. After hearing the story, I'm inclined to agree. He was about 25 years old and going through a rough patch in his life. Him and my future mum had just broken up. They would later get back together, but that's a different story. Anyway, he needed to get away for a while. As such, he decided to rent out a cabin for the weekend. Just him, the birdsong, and a few beers. He booked one in this really remote, wooded area. He goes and collects the keys from the cabin's owner. A really nice guy in his thirties. Friendly, helpful, no trouble whatsoever. He gives him a quick tour of all the rooms, asks if there's anything more he can do, and then leaves my dad to it. My dad spends his first day there, relaxing and recharging, enjoying the beautiful scenery and trying to take his mind off his crummy situation. On that first evening there, he heads out on a long walk through the nearby woods. He wants to clear his head outside before the sun sets. He gets a little bit lost, however. By the time he gets back to the cabin, it's already dark. He enters the cabin, and immediately, something strikes him as weird. The curtains at the back of the cabin were drawn closed. Strange, he didn't remember closing them before he went out on the walk. Then again, his head was all over the place that weekend. Hello? He calls out. No response. Shaking it off as a mistaken memory, he walks into the bedroom to go to sleep. Again, something seems off inside. It wasn't the curtains again. There weren't any windows in the bedroom area. He says there was just a strange atmosphere in the room. He felt tense and ill at ease. Something in the back of his mind, in his subconscious, told him that there was a threat nearby. He grabbed his car keys and jacket, walked out the front door, got into his car, and drove to a hotel. For whatever reason, he refused to stay in that cabin. At the end of the weekend, he returns to the cabin at around 4pm to drop the keys back to the owner. To his surprise, the owner's already there, along with several police officers. They're all astonished to see my dad. You see, the cabin's owner had come by a little earlier than he and my dad had agreed to collect the keys. Obviously, my dad wasn't there, so the owner had a look around the cabin to check that everything was alright. On the couch in the living room, there was a large, muddy shovel. That was a little weird, he thought. Then, he entered the bedroom. Inside, he found several Polaroid pictures laid out neatly on the bed. They were of my dad taken at various points throughout the day. One of him drinking a beer outside, one of him looking out the window. One was even of the cabin owner handing him the keys. They had all been taken from within the tree line. On the back of the last picture, someone had left a handwritten message. So close. Realizing that someone had been stalking my dad from the very beginning of his trip, and that my dad was now missing, the owner immediately called the police. When they arrived, they scoured the woods in search of my dad. Not too deep in, they found a freshly dug hole, four foot deep, seven foot in length. My dad arrived an hour later. The brain's a funny thing. Sometimes the subconscious takes in information that we aren't fully aware of. Perhaps something else was slightly out of place in the bedroom, or just different to how he left it. Whatever the case, the warning signals went off, and he listened. If this story has taught me anything, it's to always listen to my gut. Instinct probably saved my dad's life that night. Number 2 this didn't just happen to me, but my friends, Macy, Eric, and Dorian too, while we were all out on a trip in northwest Montana. Macy's parents had a cottage out by Flathead Lake. One weekend, we all decided to head over there and do a spot of fishing. 
in this digital age, it's very easy to lose touch with nature. Personally, I was starting to feel like a caged animal that summer, trapped indoors with no reason to go outside. Well, no reason other than my crappy part-time job. I guess we all just wanted to reconnect with the great outdoors. They say that when you're around old friends, you act the same age that you were when you met them. That was definitely true for us. We were a bunch of 19-year-olds, goofing around like we'd just hit puberty. Some things never change. We get to the cabin, and it's absolutely beautiful. A serene little log cabin, far out in the middle of nowhere. It was nice to get away from the bustle of our town. I mean, the cabin still had internet and everything, so it's not like we were totally living off the grid. But for us, this was going to be a taste of what it felt like to be a real outdoorsman. We all unpack and get to fishing as planned. Not many bites that day, sadly. Dorian wandered off by himself, looking for a better fishing spot. When he finally came back a while later, he seemed a little agitated. He told us that while out fishing a ways away, he heard what he thought was rustling in the tree line to his right. A little concerned about what it might be, he kept an eye on the area. Most of his attention was still focused on his rod in the water, when he heard what he thought was a bell ringing from the same spot in the trees. He swore that he saw a figure watching him from the bushes. Not that he could make out many features, he was still a fair distance away, but it looked like he was wearing a hoodie and crouching. That's when he grabbed his gear and hightailed it back to us. This put us all on edge. The closest cabin to ours was far, far away. We weren't expecting to see another soul this whole weekend. Still, it was probably nothing. We called it a day and headed back to the cabin early. We ate dinner and joked around until sunset, though we all kept occasionally glancing out the window. None of us said what we were looking for, but it was obvious that Dorian's story had made us all a little paranoid. Being the dumb kids we were at heart though, we decided to stick around for the night. When you're deep in nature, the nights are particularly dark. No light pollution. Looking out the window was like looking into the abyss unless you pressed your face right up to the glass. Then you could just about make out the outlines of the trees that surrounded us. To us, the slight fear we were all feeling was kind of fun. You know when you're with your buddies and you get spooked by something, but for whatever reason, you all kind of stick around and try to spook each other as well. Well, it was kind of like that. If any of us were by ourselves, we'd have been freaking out. But since we were all together, it was a sort of mini rush. Eventually, it starts getting late and we hit the hay. We're all sleeping in separate areas of the cabin. I'm in the living space on the couch. I'm exhausted from the long day, and the sound of the wind outside is sending me off to sleep. I'm almost out cold when I hear the distinct sound of a bell ringing. It was coming from just outside the front of the cabin. It sounds off once, and then again, and again, sometimes quick and loud, sometimes slow and faint. I'm sitting upright in a heartbeat, and I don't have to call for my friends. They're all congregating in the living space now, keeping their voices low. It's the guy from the bushes, Dorian whispered to us all. He's outside the cabin. Pressing my eyes close to the window, I could see that he wasn't wrong. Out in front of the cabin, facing us, was a figure in a goddamn rocking chair. He was sitting stiff, rocking back and forth in the breeze. We have no idea how to react. After a while of watching in fear, Macy, the bravest of the group, opens up the window and shouts to the guy to go away that his prank wasn't funny. The guy in the chair doesn't react, and just sits there, rocking gently, the sound of the bell ringing out. We grab a few knives and cautiously walk out the front door of the cabin, staying in a tight group. I was just following Macy at this point, to be honest, hoping that he knew what he was doing. Get out of here, Macy shouts, as we slowly get closer to the guy. Again, he doesn't react, and for good reason. The guy in the chair 
isn't alive. It's an old, dead man. We panic. Eric made a break for the tree line before coming to his senses and running back to the cabin with the rest of us. We locked the door and made sure all of the windows were sealed tight. Then we called the authorities. It took what felt like a lifetime for them to finally find us. They were just as weirded out by the dead old man as we were. Examining him in greater detail, they said that whoever he was, he'd been dead for a long time. They could tell from the decomposition. He was most likely disinterred from his grave. Namely, some sicko had dug this poor guy up and put him in that damn rocking chair. Whoever had done this had also tied a small bell around the man's neck, which rang out as the chair rocked back and forth. A very light set of footprints could be made out in the dirt, leading up to the chair from the tree line. The authorities couldn't find a set leading back though, so God knows what direction the perpetrator walked off in. To our knowledge, the investigation never came to anything. Whoever was watching Dorian from the woods that day remains at large. Why they dug up the old man and used him to terrorize us, I have no idea. Number 3 While I was growing up, my family would visit the same lake every year for a week every summer. We'd stay in the same cabin every time. As we got older, we would visit a large rock we called the Cliffs, and jump off it. The rock was only 15 feet tall at its highest point, but the water was really, really deep. When we got older, we'd jump in and try to touch the bottom, but we never could. When my brother and I were in our teens, we took kayaks out to the cliffs to jump off on our own. We jumped off several times, and when we got too cold, we'd take a break on the top of the cliffs to warm up in the sun. As we were sitting there, we noticed a white shape in the water, floating towards the surface. It was a letter. H. Eventually, it sank back down into the water, and we lost sight of it. Before we could look away or say anything, another shape was floating upwards. It was the letter E. Eventually, it too sank below, but it was soon followed by two more letters, L and P. We didn't jump in after that. We stood up and left without saying a word. We never mentioned it to anyone, and I forgot it even happened after a while. Several years ago, I was working as a camp counsellor, and I told this as a ghost story. I'd forgotten about it, and I texted my brother to see if I hadn't just made it up completely. I asked him if he remembered the time we went to the jumping cliffs alone and saw something in the water. He replied, yes, that he did remember. I asked him what it was. And his reply was, Letters. They spelled help. Number 4 I was spending a long weekend with my family in this log cabin. Nobody else around for miles. It was late afternoon, and I decided to go for a walk by myself through the woods. About ten minutes in, something starts to feel a little off. I realize that it's because of the sound, or more specifically, the lack of it. The woods had become dead silent. No bird chirps, rustlings, or general nature noises at all. Just pure, unnatural silence. Anyone who spends a lot of time outdoors will tell you that a quiet forest is a dangerous forest. I hear someone approaching from in front of me. When he comes into view, I see that it's a lone man in his fifties. As we come to pass each other, I get a close look at him. He's got thinning, grey hair, deep wrinkles across his forehead, piercing grey eyes, sickly, patchy skin. 
The reason I'm mentioning the details of his face is to highlight that this wasn't a mask. He's got this big smile plastered on his face, and his eyes are so wide they look like they're bulging out of his skull. This expression is frozen on his face. As we get closer to one another, his head turns so that he can keep his unblinking eyes fixed on me. A little creeped out, I give him a polite nod. He gives me nothing in return, just that wide-eyed, toothy smile. As we finally cross by each other, his head is turned to the side, his vision still fixed on me. I continue past him, but I'm on guard for obvious reasons. What the hell was this guy doing out in these woods, so far from civilization? There wasn't a house besides our cabin for miles. I glance over my shoulder to check that he's not following me. The blood drains from my face when I see him. He's still walking away from me, but his head is facing me, like it's on backwards, an impossible angle, that messed up expression still on his face. I'm overcome by this sinking feeling, and I sprint off deeper into the woods. I want to put as much distance between me and him as possible. When I feel safe enough, I slow down and slap myself back into reality. The birds are chirping like normal again. Whoever that man was, he was walking in the direction of our cabin, but none of my family members caught sight of him. If this was some sort of prank, then I have no idea how he managed to get that effect. It was too real. Nor can I think why he'd be out in those woods, all by himself, where he'd most likely encounter no one. I still get nervous when I pass by strangers in the woods, and I always turn to check that they're not keeping an eye on me after I've passed them. Hi guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. So Cabin in the Woods stories, <laughs> a fun little idea I thought. Um, some sort of paranormal, some not, some kind of ambiguous, I don't know. I know you don't all like uh, paranormal stuff, but it's fun for me from time to time to do a few of them. Mix things up a little bit, keep it a little fresh. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed all the stories, and if you did, be sure to smash that like button or I'll smash you. And I'll be coming back with a new video very, very soon. Until then guys, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.